everyone, Brianna is here. Happy March. It has been almost a month since I've sat down and did a video by myself. The last video that I did, um, I talked about the Yale affirmative action case that was dropped by the Department of Justice. If you want to watch that, I will link that so that you can go watch that if you want to see some of the other content that I have put out. Um, so today, what I want to talk about is something that I've seen circulating in the news and it has to do with I feel like some people's favorite musician in the world and that is Taylor Swift. To keep up with the theme of Women's History Month, I feel like this month I really want to highlight and put out content that deals with women's issues, um, but not sugarcoating some stuff. Um, the issue that I have with Taylor Swift as a whole, and it's probably gonna be in the title, is the fact that she embodies everything that would be known as a white feminist. Like she embodies everything that has to do with white feminism. And if you are not familiar with what white feminism is, I'll just do a quick rundown. I myself, I call myself a feminist, but I call myself an intersectional feminist because I believe that modern day, well, all feminism as a whole has really left out um, women of color and especially black women because I feel like a lot of other groups um, have really tried to come up in a way that was white adjacent or trying to come up in a way that appealed to white people. And I think that black people as a whole, um, when it came to civil rights, trying to get legislation passed, we have really worked hard to make sure that we are understanding our own culture, who we are, where we're coming from, and why we deserve to be included because we have been a part of this country. Um, besides Native Americans, I would say that, you know, more than many white people who so-called immigrated or colonized here. Um, so Taylor Swift has been someone who I'm not really a fan of. I think she has some decent music. Her early days, I, I loved her songs. Um, well, I wouldn't go along to say that I loved her songs, so, like I, I listened to them, but I'm not like a Swifty or anything, like I'm not like a, a Taylor Swift fan. Um, the thing that really stood out to me was, with her is that she does a lot of things, in my opinion, that makes her a victim of her own circumstances. I have empathy for people. I believe that, you know, people deserve to be treated equally. I believe that people should people should not be um, discriminated against. I, I believe that. But the issue that I have with her and with a lot of white feminists is that they do things and then they get upset when they're called out for doing said things. And then they try to say, oh my God, I'm being called out because I'm a woman. No, you're not being called out because you're a woman being called out because you're doing some questionable things. Um, a few years ago, I want to say maybe one or two years ago, she came out with... Um, a Netflix special and it was called Miss Americana or something and I remember I was telling Hope about it she was watching I, I wasn't gonna you know give her the views and it was talking about how I think it was like Marsha Blackburn who's a senator in Tennessee where Taylor Swift lives she was talking about how she was so upset you know she she couldn't believe that people like she would be like the Republican nominee for for Senate in Tennessee which I'm not shocked by I'm like if you've seen anything that the GOP has put forward pretty much for the past almost 30 years. I don't know how you can be upset or shocked by bigotry and homophobia and everything else that they have going on. Um, so she put out this documentary and it was pretty much her talking to her dad and, and talking about how she's not okay with Marsha Blackburn and her anti-gay rhetoric, which is crazy to me because, and I've noticed this with a lot of celebrities, is that we pick and choose, not just with celebrities, with influential culture as a whole and cancel culture as a whole. I believe that people should be canceled based on the things that they do, especially if they are old enough to know right from wrong. And I have said it before, and I said it um, in, in previous videos, that I feel like when you get to a certain age, you know right from wrong. In fact, there are kindergartners who know right from wrong. You, I'm tired of people saying, and this is a bit off topic, but I'm just going to preface with this. I'm tired of people saying that things like um, racism, especially racism, is a phase. And why I say racism is because I see a lot of people who do a lot of things that are racist, but we, we push past that as like, oh, that's okay. But when someone says something about other groups of people, that's when they get canceled. And that's the issue that I have. And I by no means I'm saying that, oh, because someone is saying something that's anti-Semitic, they're saying something that is that is 
um, homophobic, transphobic. I'm not for any of that. I don't play around when it comes to stuff like that. I was raised in a household that you treat people with respect and I call people out equally. I think that sometimes people are okay with racism because a lot of the people who are in positions of power and a lot of people who are making them the money, these white creators, are white people. And so racism doesn't affect them. I have met plenty of, of, of you know, gay racists. And people think, oh my God, well, I'm gay, so it doesn't matter what I do. No, you're still going to be called out because there is a lot of racism that's going on within your community. And I'm going to call out the racism. It's the same way that I would call out if anyone's doing anything wrong or detrimental or rude towards a certain group of people based on circumstances that they could not control. So that's what I have to say about that. My issue is, is that Taylor Swift who was supposed to be this woman who's all about feminism and cares about what, you know, women's rights. I never see her speak up about black women. I remember it was a few years ago, Nicki Minaj was talking about, I think it was like, like the VMAs or something, where she called out and said, she said something, but I don't even think she said anything about Taylor Swift. I have to go back and look at it. And she pretty much was talking about how black women don't have bodily autonomy when it comes to being performers. Black women, when they do things and, and, Something that I have really seen is that, you know, it's almost like black women have to be humbled. You know, we've seen it a lot with like Megan Thee Stallion or even with Lizzo. It's like when you give off body positivity, it's like people don't want black women to be happy in their skin. So they have to do everything they can to try to knock us down and tell us that we're not good enough. I'm like, I know I'm fine. I know I look good. But why is it that if I think that I look good, you have to try to sit here and be like, well, no, you're not all that. Why not? If I'm a 10 in my mind, I'm a 10 in my mind. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter what you think. But I remember Nicki Minaj saying that, and I remember Taylor Swift pretty much talking about how that was um, misogynistic and, um, you know, it was anti-woman, anti-feminist. When it really didn't have anything to do with that, it was just pretty much talking about how black women are, it's a double standard when it comes to black women's bodies. And even sometimes with like um, non-white Latinas. You know, we are overly sexualized and the things that we do is really like people try to pick apart and nitpick and try to tell us how to live our lives, not in the way that white women get to live their lives and be so free. And it's baffling to me because I see it a lot with white feminists is that whenever you call out their whiteness, they take that as, oh my God, no, you're being misogynistic. Oh my God, that's the patriarchy because they cannot handle people calling out the fact that yes, you are still white and yes, because you are, you are a woman, but you still live in a space where white women are put on a pedestal and, and really coddled. You know, we have to call out, I call out white feminism a lot. I see people, and I remember it was on SNL, I forget what the man's name was, but he was pretty much talking about how white women have tried to frame themselves into being victims in society when they were perpetuating some of the most heinous, racist hate crimes that were happening. I mean, if you think about it, racism still goes on today, and racism was very rampant. I have seen pictures where people are having picnics with their children at lynchings. Who was raising the racists? It was the white women because men weren't raising kids like that and women were in the home. So we're not going to sit here and act like it's just white men who are perpetuating these racist standards when white women were going on along with it. I, I forget, what's the lady's name? Um, I think it was Susan B. Anthony um, or, or one of those women for the first wave of feminism. And she said she would rather cut off her arm than like fight for a Negro or something. I'm going to find the quote and I'll, and I'll put the, the exact quote. But she said that, you know, white women were really at the helm of a lot of racist um, hate crimes that happened throughout Jim Crow era all the way through the 80s. I mean, heck, if you even look at like the Tulsa race riots and um, they called it, it was like the bloody summer of like 1920 or 22 or something. It, a lot of those were started because white women would lie and say that black men were being uh, were raping them and sexually assaulting them and they would lie about it and then the whole town would get burned down 
because of their lives. I mean, look at Emma Till. That woman, I believe she's still alive. If she's died, good, good for that. And, you know, I don't care what anyone has to say. That woman deserves to burn in hell for what she did. You know, Emma Till had such a gruesome death all because a white woman lied. And then she admitted to lying in a book um, that was supposed to come out because, like, when she dies or, like, because she was dying. And what we need to talk about is the fact that, like, white women have been able to center themselves at the helm of being perpetual victims. I mean, it's like if you call them out, they start boo crying like you kicked them in the stomach. You know, you can't call out anything that they do unless that's misogynistic or anti-women. But in the same breath, I don't see them coming to defend black women when things are happening to them. I don't. Taylor Swift wants to be all body positive, la di da, when, when Nicki Minaj says something. But where was she when Serena Williams was being called a man? You know, because she's muscular, even though she's like one of the best athletes of all time. And I don't think that she looks like a man, but black women's bodies are, have been, you know, masculinized throughout history. Which is crazy to me because having larger breasts, bigger butts, like I feel like that would make you look a little bit more feminine. But we have been, you know, put as being compared to men. I see people call people call Megan the Stallion a man because she's I think five ten or something. Taylor Swift is also five ten, and never in my life in the. 15 probably years that Taylor Swift has been out. I have never seen anybody call that woman a man. And I'm not saying she should be called a man. But there's a double standard with how we view black women's bodies and how we view white women. Taylor Swift has dated dang near every man from here to Timbuktu. And that's fine. If you can get a man like that and you can, you know, that's fine. But if that was a black woman that went through men that quick, you would be calling her all types of hoes, all types of she can't keep a man, all types of stuff. I mean, and I understand like that's her prerogative. She's a young woman. She's not ugly. You know, she fits America's, well, really, you know, the world's beauty standard of being a blonde haired, blue eyed white woman. You know, so she benefits from that. If she wants to date every man that she comes in contact to, she can do that. That is well within her right. And I do not judge her for that. She can do whatever she wants to do. As long as she's not with, with my man or my friend's man, I don't care. She can do whatever she wants. That is her life. She's a grown woman. I will never sit here and tell a grown woman what they should and should not do. Until you start to perpetuate negative stereotypes and try to act like a woman, like a white woman and be a Karen. I don't like to use the word Karen because I feel like people have taken it and ran with it too far, but that is exactly what she acts like. I will never forget when I was, I was probably about maybe um, 14 or 15 and I was a really big Jonas Brothers fan. Well, specifically a really big Nick Jonas fan. And I remember Joe Jonas had dated Taylor Swift. And if you were like a really big Jonas Brothers fan and you saw their concert, they did like the Burn It Up tour. This is like 2009-ish that came out in theaters. And I remember um, Taylor Swift was a guest. Um, she she was um, in, the movie, in the concert movie. I think she maybe toured with them too. This is when Taylor Swift was like first coming out. And I remember, I will never forget like when her and Joe Jonas broke up and she was on Ellen and she had two Barbie dolls and she was like, well, then this Barbie doll is going to take a call this doll on the phone and it's going to break up with them in like 10 seconds. And, blah, blah, blah. and I just thought that was so immature. I, I found that to be my 14 year old self was like, what was the point, Taylor? Like, what, why? Like, why were we? Why did you do that? I couldn't I couldn't wrap my head around it. I thought it was extremely immature and that was like the downward spiral that I felt like she was just gonna be a victim her whole life. She really is. Um she dates so many different men, she makes questionable decisions when dating these men, and like I said, she can make those decisions, she's a grown woman. But we're not gonna sit here and act like you don't date dang near everybody you come in contact with now i think she's been in a relationship with some british dude that she's dating right now for like three or so years and good for her maybe they get married i don't know my issue is is that whenever people call her out because she's notorious for writing songs about her breakups and the, and the men that she's dated when people call her out, I remember it was, she specifically named Ed Sheeran. And she was talking about, well, Ed Sheeran 
wrote an album about his ex and then it, she mentioned Adele and she was like, Adele wrote an album about her ex. Well, the difference that I would like to point out is that Ed Sheeran and Adele wrote one album about a relationship that they had. They do not have an album that has multiple songs about multiple different people. And it's not just Taylor Swift. I remember like when Drake dates somebody or like when something happens to Drake, they'd be like, oh my God, like we're going to get a good album out of this. Like people make those jokes about many people who, who write and produce their own music. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's just a joke. Now, to come full circle and to say what I what has really like grinded my gears about Taylor Swift is that, and like I said about the Miss Americana that happened on Netflix, she has been very much silent. You know, when Donald Trump first was running for president, and I have been very vocal about how I do not care for that man and how I do not really care for the Republican Party as a whole, because I think that there are a bunch of wimps who don't have a backbone, who have been to the beck and call of the GOP and a bunch of racist narcissists, and they have really ruined their own party. And they have made conservative values into something that was supposed to be about fiscal responsibility and about um, small government and states' rights, and they made it into a party of bigotry, homophobia, racism, um, philandering, um, pedophilia, and a lot of many other things that I myself do not agree with. And also on the fact of not taking accountability for their actions while trying to um, scapegoat Democrats um, and, and, and trying to make them seem like they're bad people. So no, I, I don't agree with what the Republican Party chooses to do. People can like me or dislike me for that. I have taken enough of political theory courses. I was a political science major, um, and right now, and I do. I'm getting a communications master's degree, and I do research on political communication, image repair, all of that. So let me tell you, I am very well versed in the political um, scheme of things, and I like to keep myself very well informed. And because I keep myself well informed, I have made the judgment to not really care for the Republican Party, and I think that it needs to go away. So that's what I have to say about that. But Taylor Swift has, has operated in a very white space that has allowed her to sit back and relax and enjoy the show of watching black people and many people of color be on the end of a lot of racist attacks. When Black Lives Matter was first getting started, I did not see Taylor Swift post a thing. When, you know, when we had Trayvon Martin, um, uh, what was his name, Eric Garner, Michael Brown, all people who I do not believe were, you know, I don't think that people, uh, police should be the judge during executioner for black people. I feel like that is, you know, when people talk about the Constitution, you know, they only th seem to think about the Second Amendment, but not, you know, the fact that we have a right to um, a quick and speedy trial and all of those things. I, I think they only know the first two amendments. And then after that, maybe the education system, wherever they're from, just decided, oh, we don't need to learn anything else. There are 27 amendments. I think that people should learn all of them. So... Uh, I digress to go back to, I feel like Taylor Swift has been very, very um, complacent. And she could be complacent in her whiteness and in her white womanhood because a lot of the things that were being said did not affect her. I mean, even the things of like abortion rights, uh, you know, birth control being available to women, uh, you know, for her to be so, and, and this is something that I bring up a lot, is that there's a lot of white feminists that always talk about, oh my God, like the womb and, and, and you know, you should stay out of my uterus and we should be helping women for safe reproductive rights. But I, I very rarely see white women talk about the fact that maternal mortality rates in this country are absolutely abysmal and they're extremely abysmal for black and native women. I don't hear people talk about that. There have been so many black women who go to the hospital for routine checkups or for routine deliveries and they don't make it out because of the racist healthcare system that we have in this country and the ignorance that they perpetuate through um, medical school, saying that black women don't uh, feel pain or black people as a whole don't feel pain, that we have thicker skin, you know, that, you know, our bodies develop, you know, so much differently, that we're just being dramatic. You know, the opioid crisis that we have in this country, I will say it doesn't affect black people the way that it does white people 
because of racist doctors. They assumed that we would all be drug addicts and that we would try to either take them or try to sell them. And so we didn't get um, these prescription painkillers and opioids, but they were giving them to white people and that's why they're addicted to it. So, you know, sometimes racism benefits you. But Taylor Swift has never spoken about that. But in 2018, all of a sudden, something in her sparked it that she needed to say something. You've been complacent and quiet about your decade-long career. What was it about then that all of a sudden you felt like you needed to say something? And even till this day, I feel like she uses her platform for stupid stuff. In 2018, when we were having the midterm elections, I remember, uh, I think it was um, Beto O'Rourke was running for... Um, senator against Ted Cruz in Texas. I remember Beyonce like two days before the election said, oh, she was endorsing Beto O'Rourke. And instead of people being like, oh my God, thank you for using your platform, they said she was too little too late. It is not Beyonce's job to make people vote. And most of the people who are probably Beyonce fans are already going to vote that way. But where was, you know, why doesn't anyone get on Taylor Swift for not helping? Why, why not? You know, I, what? Well, why was anyone saying that she was too little too late? No one ever ca calls out these white women who use their platforms at the benefit of absolutely no one but white women. You can't say that you're a feminist and leave out black women constantly. Which is why I said that I'm an intersectional feminist. Because I meet at the intersection of not only being a woman, but being a, a minoritized group in this country of being African American. So not only do I have to deal with systemic racism, I also have to deal with systemic um, marginalization of women, especially black women, because I'm seen as less than and pretty much on the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to all women in the world. So I am not a fan of the things that Taylor Swift does because I think that she just does things for her own benefit just to be a perpetual victim. I do not like it and that is what white f feminism is to me. I'm sick of seeing people um, like that woman in the park screaming, talking about this black man was attacking her. That's very on bar with what white women do. And then instead of calling it out, they'd be like, I don't want to be called a Karen. A Karen is a slur. Or, or imagine being called the N-word. Um, you know, you didn't have any problem when black women were getting called Shaniqua and Shakina and, and, and all the hip rolling and, and stealing our, uh, our vernacular and getting made fun of us. You had no problem when Hispanic women were being called Consuela and everything else. You had no problem when, when Asian women were being called Ling Ling and all this other stuff that they would make up that just sounded Asian. You did not care. You were quiet as a church mouse when every other group of women was going through stuff. When Nicki Minaj called that out, and, and you even see a difference with how Lizzo's treated, where someone like Ashley Graham or other plus-size white women are treated, you don't see them being their bodies being policed the way that black women's bodies are. But you're quiet about that. You're so quiet. And then you're calling out Netflix now because this new show, Jenny and Georgia, that came out. And they, the girl makes a comment to her mother pretty much saying, oh, you go through more men than Taylor Swift. And then Taylor Swift is over here cussing up a storm. I thought your platform was supposed to be, you know, about younger women and you have a lot of children following you. But you didn't care about that. You're over here talking about Netflix should be ashamed of themselves and how this is anti-woman. Get out of here, Taylor. Like, get out of here. You do date a bunch of men. No one's lying. And it's not misogynistic. No one is saying, oh, you're a bad person because you're a woman. No one called you a slut. No one called you a whore. No one called you the B word. No one said anything. They literally just said, oh, you run through me like Taylor Swift. Because, heck, every time we used to turn around, you had a new man on your arm. Good for you for being able to do that. I can't do that. I don't find that many men attractive to be able to move on that quickly. But good for you for being able to maneuver the dating world. I remember w Wendy Williams called her out. She was like, you know, in your career, we've, we've linked you to like 15 different men. Never, never once have I ever heard anyone say she was a whore, a slut, anything. Ever. Ever. And she's, I, she revolves through more men than I've seen in anyone in the entertainment industry. That I've seen in my generation. Now, I know that there have been a lot of famous white women like Elizabeth Taylor who was married uh, dang near almost 10 times. That happens. Good for you for being able to do that. You didn't like him, divorce him. We couldn't do that. You had money, you could live your own life, do whatever you want. I don't care. I'm not judging you. 
And that's the thing. It's not from judgment. It's just a joke. People make fun of, uh, I, you know, I see people make fun of Leonardo DiCaprio all the time because, you know, he doesn't date anyone over the age of 25 and he has a revolving door of women. I, people criticize him on it. People make jokes about it. I don't ever see him complaining. And yeah, and, and I really do think that Taylor Swift needs to grow thicker skin. You are in the wrong industry if you cannot take people making jokes about you. You can't because it could be far worse. Now, if someone said that she spreads her legs to every man, and here's the crazy part, and I maybe we'll do another video about this, about the double standard within dating between black women and white women, but I know a lot of people, I grew up in a predominantly white area, and I went to predominantly white schools through my entire school career through college, and I knew a lot of white girls who would start dating in elementary school, middle school, some of them even sleeping with their boyfriends in middle school, doing these things. And you never hear people call them the types of sluts and whores, fast, easy, the way that they do with black girls who just have someone looking at, who may not even have anyone looking at them. You know, just because you looked at a guy, you know, people are calling you fast and easy and everything else. It's a double standard. I mean, the way that people roasted Lori Harvey for dating Michael B. Jordan because we've seen her with, what, maybe four men, it's crazy to me because they were like, she's a thought, she's, you know, going, she's ran through. I've heard so much. I've never heard anyone say anything like that about these, these white uh, actresses and musicians. Everyone is always worried about what's going on between the legs of black women, but no one calls out the complete double standard with what white women are able to do. I mean, you had a whole franchises, Girls Gone Wild, all types of stuff that was literally made up mostly of white women doing things, and I never hear white women get sexualized for the things that they choose to do. We have turned feminism into about sleeping with multiple people, being able to do things that honestly I don't think it's anyone's business and that people have probably been doing before. But that's what we focused on instead of the fact that we need real health care that's going to help people to get these maternal mortality rates down. That are high for white women in this country too. Let's just be real with ourselves. But they're even higher for black and native women in this country. That's what we need to be focusing on. We talk about the wage gap and how white women, well, how women make 75 cents to the dollar as men. But we don't talk about the fact that black women make less than that and Hispanic women make even less than that. Whenever we talk about feminism and equality, we always focus ourselves around white women. And women of color, specifically black women, are usually left out. When black women are at the head of a lot of feminist movements, most movements that we have had in this country, black women being the backbone of not just uh, Black Lives Matter, of also using black trans women being at the helm, and, and not even just trans women, just LGBTQ women at the helm of civil rights for gay people as well and 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 the civil rights movement seeing so many women who were really trying to raise up and 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 build up children who would be strong and be able to live in the society okay my dog was barking but i'm back so we have to stop with that taylor swift needs to get it together and figure out her priorities because there is so much more going on in the world for me to care about who you're sleeping with and someone making a joke on a Netflix show that's for kids. Get over yourself. And if you want to call yourself a feminist, I need to see you doing the legwork and doing a lot more than just baking cookies that say Joe Biden on it and coming up every six or so years to say that you don't like the anti-gay things that someone in your red state is doing. I'm going to need you to do more. And I'm going to need you to do more to stand behind black women and not try to, and don't talk over black women to sit there, understand, listen, and use your platform for good. You have hundreds of millions of followers. There is no reason for you to be sitting here and using your platform to complain about something. And, and first of all, Netflix owes you no solidarity just because they put your thing on there. You do know that they're a business and they do things to make money. They know that you have a big platform, so if they made a documentary with you or they published their documentary onto their platform, they were doing it because they wanted more views, they wanted to get more advertisers because they wanted to make money because it is a business. It has absolutely nothing to do with any type of solidarity to you. They are not married to you. There is, like, could you imagine being a celebrity or someone and, and being like, oh my God, I have a TV show, and then, oh, 
there's another TV show on the show and they make fun of me, like they're supposed to like love me. That's not how that works. So I'm going to need people like Taylor Swift and the rest of the white feminists who follow behind her and don't care about anyone but themselves to get a grip on life. We have so much going on right now in this country and the last thing that I need to be worrying about or that I want to hear about is Taylor Swift sitting here boohoo crying about something that doesn't matter again. This woman is uh, 30 plus years old. Imagine being a 30 year old rich white woman and the only thing you have to do is to sit on uh, Twitter and, and complain with a bunch of 15 year olds about stuff that doesn't really matter. Go continue to re-record your songs and complain about how because you weren't a business savvy enough to buy your own masters, that how that was misogyny too. Everything is not misogyny, Taylor. It is Some of it is just because you make very poor decisions in life and you know, you're a victim of your own circumstances. So it is now, it is Women's History Month. I will not take any more of white feminism taking over at the helm of Women's History Month when I have not seen very much being done for them to include other groups of women. That's the end of that. I'm, I'm not dealing with it anymore. It's 2021. We need to leave Taylor Swift and her victim mentality in 2020. Or we're just going to leave it in February 2021. Because from here on out, I, I don't have the patience for it anymore. Like, I need homegirl to get a grip. That is to Taylor Swift, and that is to all the Swifties as well. This is not misogynistic. It is just me, a black woman, understanding that there are things that are a little bit more important than a show on Netflix making a joke about you. If we sat here and we want to cancel everyone because they made a joke about someone, we wouldn't have comedians. It could be a lot worse. And I hope it doesn't get worse. I don't wish any ill will or, or, or sickness, death, or anything onto anyone. I don't wish that on anyone. I, I don't think that that should happen. Are jokes about people wrong? Yeah, they can be hurtful. But you have to understand that you chose an industry that puts you in a spotlight and people are going to talk about you. You made the decision when you decided that you wanted to be a, a country pop singer. If you cannot take jokes and you cannot handle people saying things about you, especially things that are not inherently negative at all, I'm going to need you maybe to retire and maybe sit back and not do anything that's in the limelight because it may not be for you. So that's all I have to say about that situation. Um, let me know in the comments any other things that you want me to talk about. Uh, like I said, I want to be doing more sit-down videos of, of my own, of talking about news stories, related to women, feminism, anything that really I'm interested in is what I'll sit here and talk about. Um, me and Hope, we have just filmed our volume two of our podcast, Verbal Dissertations. Um, so all of the podcasts from now on will be filmed. So we'll give more of a live setting so you guys can like see us interacting with each other, talking. You get to see Cooper running in and out, being a little bit annoying, but that's what we have him for like I love him um so yes I will link also in this video um the first chapter of our volume two which is going to be dealing with social media right on cue with this video and we're going to be talking about Instagram Facebook and Twitter so you guys check that out we are streaming uh, the podcast will be streaming on all platforms so it's on Spotify um, we do it through Anchor FM so you can watch it through there uh, we have it on Apple Podcasts Google Podcasts um, we have a link in the description box that has all of the different links for you to go and to listen to the podcast volume one was all about relationships so go and please check that out to your friends to subscribe subscribe to this channel like this video and thank you so much for being here and listen to me talk about something that i found to be very important All right bye guys